Hi, my friends. Welcome back. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the Bible, God's Word. Uh, help, help me to obey it. Help us to learn more about you. Uh, Lord, reveal more about you. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So let's go over verse 8 again, and then we'll continue. That is they which are the children of the flesh. Now, these aren't carnal Christians, although they probably could be. But I don't believe they are, uh, because of what the next statement is. These are not the children of God. So, carnal Christians are those that are still growing. Uh, they, they believed uh, in Jesus as their Savior, but they're still stumbling. They still have not got the victory. Uh, and trust me, I was there. I didn't have the victory for certain things a long time. Uh, the victory over their flesh. Uh, these are not the children of God. So this is someone who has not received Jesus as their Savior, but the children of the promise. Those are the ones that are counted for the seed. Okay? This, uh, for this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. At this time. I think he's talking about, uh, God's talking about a time in Genesis where he told Sarah that come next year, you're going to have a son. And that's exactly what happened. God said it. You should believe it. Just consider it done until it comes. And not only this word of knowledge, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the promises, the prom, the purposes of God, or the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of Him that calleth. So, God is the one who puts this into action. This is an action plan directly by God. It was His purpose. And his choice and nothing done by what we could do. If, if, if we could do it, then we would boast. But we can't boast. It was said unto her, the, the elder shall serve the younger. Under Rebecca, God asked, why are my something's different because these two uh, babies in my womb are fighting why are they fighting and God prophesied and said that the elder shall serve the younger that's talking about uh, the elder that's uh, Esau he's going to serve Jacob as it is written uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Nope. So, God's word is true. He is righteous. He is faithful. And... You're going to learn he is merciful.
and he's compassionate. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Come to Jesus in humbleness of heart, and he will have compassion on you. He had compassion on me when I came and I humbled myself to him. I I was uh, 10 years old when I humbled myself and I came to his door. So then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of God that shows mercy. There's nothing we can do to earn God's mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised up Moses, I think that is, uh, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. This is the children of the promise, the seed of the promise of of Isaac, of Jacob, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're grafted in. So we're part of the seed that are responsible in declaring God's word and declaring the gospel throughout the whole earth. I wonder where this is. <laughs> Right? He's going to show his power. He's going to show his word. He's going to show his compassion. I wonder where this is. Well, this is in Acts 1 8. Uh, let me hold the phone this way and I'll go look it up. Okay. Okay. Six. Alright, there it is. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is come on you. That's uh, the Greek word, happy. This is a special relationship you can have with the Holy Spirit, not just residing in your heart, in your temple. Oh, the Holy Spirit says, Don't you know that you yourselves are the temple of God? And I just learned the temple that he's talking about isn't the whole entire structure. Uh, it's talking about the temple proper, which is the two compartments. Uh, the Holy of Holies and the whole the and the holy place this is this area where he realms in so that this is all so that temple is also a picture of of where he dwells in our spirit man he sets up a temple like that it, i can't see this spirit but I just imagine that we are the temple of God and we are to represent Jesus and we are to be his witnesses both in Jerusalem and in uh, Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost of parts of the, the earth. Uh, that's the utter, uttermost parts. That's the, ex the fullest extent of the part of that earth that you know uh, that uh, this is not maybe necessarily the whole entire globe, but this is the furthest reach that you have. Uh, because I don't, I don't think any one person can just reach, uh, unless you've a globe trotter. Well, then there it is. You don't have an excuse. <laughs> but if you're not, and you just sit at home, well. 
I guess you have the internet, which can reach everyone. Oh, man. Okay, back to Romans. Okay. Uh, so let's go to verse 18. Uh, sorry. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will harden, he will, and whom he will harden it. Okay, so if a person has decided that they don't want to know God, that they are, that they reject God, okay, they, he will eventually make this thought a permanent thought, a, this uh, groove in your mind that you hate God, he will make it permanent and you will be permanently separated from him. No, I'm sure he doesn't want you to do that. And he will definitely let you know that that is sin. But you can just keep ignoring it. You can you can keep uh, grieving the Holy Spirit. You can keep in, uh, quenching the Holy Spirit. You can insult the Holy Spirit. So you can be stubborn. And everybody can be stubborn. I'm going to smoke, and I don't care what people think. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Nobody can stop me. Okay, that is fine. You have made up your mind. And that is a right that you can do. But it would be better if you humble yourself uh, and seek God's will. Rather than your own. Thou wilt say to them, unto unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For for who hath resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing form say to him? that formed it why hast thou made me thus hast hath the not the potter oh, power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel of honor and another dishonor of course he does God has this power over our lives but he refuses to uh, force himself to love you he gave us free will so that we would honor him with our own wills and not be forced to love him we can be stubborn but God loves us and yet doesn't and loves us enough to not make this love fake. Once you decided to love Jesus and put him in your life, then you are saying that your thoughts are not to be number one. Your words are not to be number one. Your actions are not to be number one. It's God's thoughts that are to be number one. It's God's words that are to be number one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop here. I think we'll pick it up in verse 22 next time. You guys have a blessed day.